Hey Word Nerds, Erin Latimer here. Today I wanted to talk to you about writing about real people. I'm not talking about memoirs, I'm actually talking about putting real people into your fiction. Now if you look up articles about this, you will find that it's generally not recommended. Some people will tell you to avoid it entirely. Ex ne on the e life a people pay. Man, I'm not good at Pig Latin. Now, I know it's kind of a bummer that I'm saying this because you, you want to put your ex-boyfriend in your book because he was a real jerk face and kind of your revenge. And hey, if a cartoon anvil happens to fall on him out of the sky, like Wally Coyote, well, it's just fiction. But here's a few reasons why putting real people into your fiction can cause you problems later down the road. First and foremost being that people might recognize themselves and try to sue the pants off you. You know that really popular book that came out a little while ago called The Help? She got sued by a real life maid who actually worked for her brother. The thing is, she barely changed this lady's name. The real life name was Abilene. The fictional name was Abilene. Not super subtle. There were other likenesses that are frankly too many to name, but it was pretty obvious who the character was based on. Trust me on this, you really don't want a situation like that. Number two is that people might think you're cashing in on things. Authors who have included family struggles in their work are later on sometimes accused of making money off of family tragedy by both critics and family alike. The fact that is, even at the best of times when you don't include anyone from real life in your fiction, people will see themselves in your fiction anyways. JK Rowling has had multiple people ask her, am I this character? Am I this character? I'm totally Hermione because I'm so smart. I read so many books. I know I'm a girl, but I'm obviously Harry Potter, right? I mean, obviously. You really don't want to give them another reason to think that you're putting them into your novel because they'll already come to that conclusion anyways. Now you might think that one non-fictional character you can include in your novel is yourself. And in fact you can because unless I miss my guess you're not going to turn around and sue yourself. Has that ever happened? I feel like somewhere out in this wide, weird world, somebody has probably sued themselves. Realistically speaking, you're probably safe on that front, but inevitably people will read your book and they will think they know you. And yes, that includes strangers. Well-meaning strangers and mean strangers and weird strangers. There are strangers of all kinds and they'll all be reading your intimate personal details. Again, no matter what you do or who you write about, people will think that you're self-inserting. Even if your main character is a unicorn riding vampire fairy hybrid, people will still assume that you're writing about yourself. If you really want to write about your personal life experiences, absolutely go for it. But keep in mind if you're writing your deepest and darkest secrets onto the paper, other people will read it. Your family will read it. The kicker is that you will have to face them at family reunions and dinner and things and then as if that's not already awkward enough, you'll be looking at them and thinking, they read my book. Are they thinking about that scene? They're totally thinking about that scene. It's made obvious by the way he's eating his turkey. That was accusatory tones when he asked me to pass the salt. What about you guys? Do you put real life into your fiction or do you try to avoid it? And have you ever had anyone ask you if you are your main character? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget on Sunday at 7.30 Eastern time, the Warners are having our live chat and we would love to see you there. Thanks for watching fellow war nerds and I'll see you next week. You can write about a vampire camel crossover and that's weird. I don't know why I went there.